no administration in my lifetime has done more to advance religious freedom than this administration. Well, earlier today, I joined the leadership of the International Committee on Nigeria at a press conference to draw attention to the alarming situation in Nigeria. Now, I know that there are problems around the globe. I just got back from Sudan. I've talked about that on the program. And in fact, earlier this week, the Sudanese prime minister, who I met with last week, was the subject of an assassination attempt. Uh, the, the, the world is volatile. Right now, we're pulling our troops out of Afghanistan. Uh, we've got northeast Syria. We've got Turkey. We've got all these places. But Nigeria is is a critical place, and what is happening there is not getting a lot of attention. More than 350 Christians have been killed since the beginning of this year alone by terrorist groups, and the Nigerian government has done essentially nothing except watch. Now, joining me now in studio to talk more about this is Stephen Inada. He is the executive director and co-founder of the International Committee on Nigeria. And Rich, Dr. Richard Ekebe, he is the founder of International Organization of Peace Building and Social Justice. Uh, they both join me in studio. Uh, Stephen, uh, Richard, welcome to Washington Watch. Thank you for having us. Thank you, sir. Uh, let, let's just start. Um, in fact, I didn't mention this, but prior to the press conference, we uh, we met this morning with Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Um, and I know we can't go into all the details of what we talked about in the meeting, but let's talk about the the urgency of the moment and why you traveled, uh, Richard, f to uh, America today. Now, now Stephen, uh, you operate out of the United States. You're, you're tra drawing attention on this full time. But Richard, you traveled here today to be here for this meeting. How urgent is the situation? Very, very urgent. Very urgent. Um, yesterday, they killed eight people uh, in a place you would normally not associate with such violence. Uh, last week, um, they killed some people in southern Kaduna. The week before, they killed 51 uh, in the same southern Kaduna, before that in Taraba State, in Adamawa State. You know, every 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 day you wake up with uh, a new set of killings. You, you say they. Who, who Who is they? Oh, there are many groups. There is, uh, uh, there is the Boko Haram. Uh, they are operating the extreme northeast. Uh, there is uh, Ansaru, which nobody has heard of um, as much as we have all heard of Boko Haram. Uh, but Ansaru is uh, it's, it's actually equally as deadly as Boko Haram. And, and they kill with impunity. They smash babies' heads. They, they disembowel pregnant women. They do all kinds of very wicked and evil things. Uh, and then we have... Um, um, uh, Islamic State of West Africa, uh, which is um, a combination of various forces that came out of Libya. Uh, and then we have the Fulani headsmen who are devastating the states across the middle belt of Nigeria. So there, there are many groups expressing themselves with one common objective, violence, wickedness. Well, there, there seems to be another common denominator, Stephen, and that is the, the target for most of this violence, uh, it, it, they, they are Christians. Yes, sir. Um, the pattern of this uh, violence trend, even from the northeastern part of Nigeria, and if you remember, uh, Boko Haram declares uh, uh, Islamic uh, caliphate in Nigeria, and the essence of that is to annihilate Christianity. So, um, and then the pattern, even with Fulani militants, anywhere, if they sack a village, if they kill people, they occupy the such towns and villages and host their flag. And then uh, they also go about destroying churches, schools, and clinics. So these are uh, similar pattern that these uh, groups exhibited. Uh, the, the population in Nigeria. Nigeria is the most populous African country, 200 million people. 
and and roughly based upon the the numbers I've seen, it's it's 50 50 50 percent identify as uh, as Muslim, 50 percent as Christian. Is that correct? Well, I usually tell people who care about this uh, demography and all these uh, fault lines that uh, it's not totally correct. Yes, the population of Nigeria is in excess of 200 million, but uh, the in our census, religion has not been used. So now, if anybody is coming with... That, and that was deliberate, yeah, by yeah. the way. Right. Yes. And then that's happened in other countries yes. as well. And if anybody uh, comes to tell us that Nigeria is divided evenly, 50-50, it's not totally correct. Because even uh, some people never knew that uh, in Brunel State, which is adjured to be a Muslim state, they never knew that even though uh, up to six local governments are predominantly Christians, and when you remember the Chibo guests, they are Christian guests who were abducted right, right. in 2014 by Boko Haram. So uh, I would rather talk more of uh, Nigeria Christians. I know from denominational data uh, that we have in Nigeria, we have over 87 million Christians. But the point is that you're not a minority in the country, but yet you uh, Christians are being targeted. And is the desire, Richard, to drive Christians out of the state of Nigeria? Uh, it would seem so, um, particularly out of the northeast and the north central. Uh, <clears throat> it would seem as if there is a deliberate um, effort. I, I was in uh, Plateau State about two, three months ago. And um, Plateau State is in the middle of the country, uh, so one of the most beautiful uh, parts of Nigeria. Um, and uh, I, I got into this village, uh, which in a, in a very strange way had no person living there. And I asked the guy who had taken me there, I said, where are the people? He said, they have run away because they are afraid of the violence. And he said to me, in this community, there are 10 villages and towns, and only three of them are occupied because there is a systematic attempt to get Christians off the land. And these people actually bring um, their own people from wherever, even from outside Nigeria, to come and populate these places. Why? Is the Nigerian government not doing anything to protect its people? Now, I, I, I know a little bit about this uh, from uh, the case of Leah Sherabu, uh, uh, one of the uh, of actually 105 girls that were abducted about two years ago. All were released except her uh, because she refuses to renounce her faith in Jesus Christ. So she's still being held. We just marked the two-year uh, anniversary of that abduction. Why is the government not doing anything to protect uh, the, the, the Christians? Um, <clears throat> it's, it's difficult to say because governments exist to protect the inhabitants of a land, uh, who, whether they are Christian, Muslims, or non-believers in anything. Uh, but strangely, uh, in our case, uh, government is mostly mom, and uh, a very strange thing happened again uh, recently. Uh, they are trying to absorb people who are so former radical and militants, and they, they claim have been de-radicalized. They want to bring them back into society and absorb them into the military. And, and we're saying, how can you do this? When the people who have been driven off the land, you have not taken care of them. There are IDP uh, places all over the place, and um, homeless, um, widows of many children, you have not taken care of them. You are taking care of the guys who oppressed and killed their husbands and wives and children. So it, it's a very... <clears throat> It's a very unusual government that we, we have seen in Nigeria. Now, some are saying uh, this is not a religious issue. This is an issue over resources. The Fluani uh, herdsmen you talked about, those are, uh, those are cattle and herdsmen. Uh, and the Christians, primarily farmers. So they say, well, we just need the land. And so it's a, it's a fight over the land and resources. What do you say to that? 
um, it's because they don't understand the issues. And um, because the issues manifest themselves in various ways, it's easy to confuse them. And people deliberately do so sometimes. Uh, they, they, they make it look as, oh, okay, this is a, these are skirmishes between communities and uh, these are communal clashes. It is not. At the, at the core of it is religious. Uh, very quickly, before we run out of time, I have two more questions for you. One is, I'm, I'm hearing the state of the church in Nigeria is strong, that, that we're seeing revival in the Christian churches there, that people are being drawn to the Lord in a very strong way, and that uh, there's a, a strong movement taking place there. Is that, is that accurate? Um, yes, uh, but my yes is qualified. Um, a church that is insular is not fulfilling the full gospel. Um, every church should be both internal and external. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus didn't send us to ourselves. He sent us to the world around us. And most of the churches in Nigeria are active, vibrant, praying, uh, worshiping as they are. Uh, it would seem as most of our churches are, are insular and in, in, inward looking rather than uh, outward looking. Let's talk about, uh, in, in our f a couple minutes we have remaining, the, the, the work of the International Committee on Nigeria. Uh, Stephen, the focus and, and what you are trying to, to, to accomplish. What, what, what's the ask of the American government? What, do you, what, 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 what needs to happen to help the people of Nigeria? Thank you. Um, because uh, like what we have uh, established in our discussion today, and even before today, before U.S. government, is that uh, the atrocities that are committed in Nigeria are blacked out. Nobody seems to uh, hear or understand the plight of Christians in Nigeria. So International Committee on Nigeria uh, was started to bring to limelight these atrocities being committed in Nigeria, human rights violations, persecution against Christians. And by that extension, Dr. Richard Ikebe uh, started off uh, the arm, which is called PSJ, in Nigeria and the UK. So what we do is to uh, let people know and also ask government in their, poli in their foreign policies to see what Nigeria government is doing by not protecting her citizens. Then now, our special ask to the U.S. government is that, having learned from the experience of uh, Senator John Danford, a special envoy to Sudan, we want to replicate that uh, similar uh, uh, opportunity in Nigeria by asking uh, the, the U.S. president, President Trump, to appoint a special envoy to Nigeria and the Lake Chad region who have requisite authority of U.S. government by administering and gathering intel to actually address this issue. Where are the arms coming from? Who are the sponsors? All right, uh, Stephen, Richard, thanks so much for uh, joining us today. Thank, Thank you, you very much for having us. And folks, to find out more, go to the website, TonyPerkins.com, and you can follow the links over. We're out of time for today. I hope you'll join us again tomorrow. Until tomorrow, I leave you with the encouraging words the Apostle Paul found in Ephesians 6, where he says, when you've done everything you can do, when you've prayed, when you've prepared, and when you have taken your stand, by all means, keep standing. Washington Watch with Tony Perkins is brought to you by Family Research Council and is entirely listener supported. Portions of the show discussing candidates are brought to you by Family Research Council Action. For more information on anything you've heard today or to find out how you can partner with us in our ongoing efforts to promote faith, family, and freedom, visit TonyPerkins.com. Also, to leave a comment about Washington Watch, call our watch line at 1-866-372-7234. That's 1-866-372-7234.